Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at the beautiful add-on known as Curve Basher. Curve Basher 1.3 is right here and it is made available by the folks at Amod Colony. So just in case you're looking for a simple to use add-on that can help you create curves alongside several kit bashing stuff that you can work with, then this is probably right here for you. And for those who would like to take a look at this, you want to grab it, link is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Now with that said, we're going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this actually works. So with Blender simply open, how you can work with this is simple. Go over to edit, go over to preference and install it. Now once you install this, press N on your keyboard and you'd notice now we have the curve basher right here. So with the curve basher right here, what and what can we do with it? First off, we can actually cast curve onto several surfaces. So by simply pressing C on your keyboard, you can click on one part of your surface, so for example here, and you can click on another given part somewhere like here and you can now notice that we're creating a curve. Now if your curve is intersecting, you can simply use the adaptive strength to kind of move this up and down and you can choose to play with auto or aligned to get some good result. Now if you would like to make something complex, you can choose to do this on several curves or an independent curve. So by simply hitting C one more time, I would go ahead and create one more and create another one and you can see what we have there and we can also go ahead and make maybe like one and probably one more like this. Now with all this selected, we can hit J on the keyboard. You notice that we have a curve basher sort of UI that pops up. Now with this curve basher UI, once you simply move left and right, you can control the size. And if you proceed to roll your middle mouse button, you can now change the different kinds of profile that exist. So all in all, you have about eight different profiles that exist, which you can play with. So we can simply just, you know, get something like that. We can roll the mouse and you can see the kind of profiles that we're getting. And you can even choose to add some more designs to these things. So let's say, for example, maybe we have this one here. I would want to have it twisted, maybe, you know, for the fun of it. Yes, we can. So we can go in and we can simply tap J on the keyboard and let's get it a bit smaller. And then we can press T on the keyboard and we can twist this and we can twist it as much as we want and click to let go. And we have that one right there. If we'd like to make changes at any point in time, we can simply press J on the keyboard, select any given path, and we can move that path to wherever we like. But these are not the only things that you can do, you know, with this tool. You might also be saying, all right, maybe I would like something that deals with chain. Maybe you want some chain stuff. Okay, that is cool. So let's say we'd like to have some chain running through this, okay? So let's do that for this one. So if we press J on the keyboard as well, we can reduce the size as much as we want. And instead of rolling this, you know, because you notice this is just within the profile type, we don't have anything that deals with chain. So it's also worth mentioning that there are three different types of curves that you can get from here. The profile, which is the one we have, the array, and also the kit bash. So to access these things, you need to press Q on your keyboard, tap one for profile, tap two to switch over to array, and then tap three to switch over to kit bash. So to any of the ones that you're working with, you can simply get different variations from them. With the kit bash, you can get several variations like this. And for tap two to switch over to array, you can see the kind of things that we get. So we can also roll this to get something like that. And once we're done, if we press the tab key, a very interesting thing that happens is with this tab, no matter how you move this, you still have all of this repeating themselves and also creating that beautiful stuff that you like to keep. So how does this actually apply in terms of trying to connect several things together? So to work with these alongside several stuff, which, you know, we're just going to take a look at, we can make different cubes. So we can have the very first one here and we can simply move it over to there make a copy, move this right here. If you would like to connect these across different surfaces, yes, you can. So I can grab one, grab the second one, move it all the way up and simply delete whatever we have here that we don't want to use. Okay, so if you simply press C on the keyboard, you can click on one surface, look at the other surface and click. And that way you can generate things like this. Now, of course, you would notice we have a couple of, you know, funny things going right there and you can choose to play with adaptive strengths to get these things fixed. If you play with that and it doesn't work, simply hit the fix button to actually get this thing working for you. Now, once you have that there, the next thing which you might want to do is you can go back, select this object. And then if you, you know, you like to play with the stuff, of course you can do that. So we can roll this as well, get something like this, tap T on the keyboard, to twist this some more and if you also like to work with some more stuff you can also press j on the keyboard and for this one we could also go in and get something like that 
So with these things here, there is something you might probably get as a kind of an error. If you click on this object and you press the tab key, you would notice that this automatically jumps into the object mode. Now, the reason why this is jumping into an object mode is because first of all, we're working with the kit bash. Now, if you would like to get this object to actually respond like a curve, you need to make sure that you have the curve itself selected and then you need to click on it. And to do that, simply click on the curve itself, press the tab key, select the handles and you can now work with it. So you can now use this to do some very cool things. And at this point, if you press the tab key one more time, select this object, press J on your keyboard, you can now move this and you will notice that once it gets to this portion of the mesh, it simply overlaps. So with that there, you can press G on the keyboard to move this to different points, all right? You can also press S on the keyboard to scale it, and you can also press R on the keyboard to rotate it. So very, very easy and very lovely to work with. So we can press G to move it wherever we want, press S on the keyboard to scale it however we want, and you can also get some very interesting designs from this stuff. So we can move it to a point like that, and we can just simply click to get it to what we want. So very, very lovely things. But of course there is more. There's always more with tools like this. So what if you have your own custom models and you like to use your own custom models across several parts of your model? So let's say for example, we do have one more. So I'm just gonna make a copy, move that copy right here and I might simply scale this one down. So with that simply scaled down, if we like to use this to create some sort of array across our curve, yes we can. So what we can do now is we can simply tap C on the keyboard, click and then click. And once we do that right there, of course we would like to also play with the adaptive and maybe just simply bring the strength down about that point. And what we can do is simple, select the object that you want, select this other object, right click, and then mesh to kit bash. And that way you already have it. So you can increase the count that you want. And of course you can see that happening. And for those who like to play with the scale, you can also play with the scale however you want. If you would like to play with the offset, then you can also play with the offset. And this is very, very nice. But of course you might also want to do more. So more stuff like selecting this object, clicking on this one. If you like to have this to be at the start point and also this to be at the end point. So you can right click, hold down shift and click on mesh to curve. Make sure you have shift held down before clicking on mesh to curve. That way you'll be having this particular model, which is your custom model at the beginning and also at the end. So let's do that one more time. Select this, make sure you have this one selected, right click, hold down shift and click. And once you do that, you can also proceed to increase the count. So we can have this count like this and we can also play with the offset. So with the offset, we can get a very good offset and this way you can actually make things that starts from a certain point to a certain point with your model. So before we go, let's take a look at something. Let's say you have a simple model like this and you would probably want to surround this model by using curves or you like to use curves to drive several things across this model, of course you can. So what we can do is we can grab onto any of the models that we want to use as a connector and we can hold down shift and D, make copies, copies, and maybe copies. And let's say we would also want this to, you know, move over to several parts. We just want to use this to drive several things. We can also do that. So we can do a simple selection one, two, three, and four. And we can hit shift and A on the keyboard, go over to where we have a curve and click on wire generator. Now, once you do that, you would notice that we've automatically generated wires. So with these handles, we can actually move these things however we want. So if we undo all of this, let's take a look at something else. Hold down shift and tap A on the keyboard. We can go over to where we have a wire generator and instead of just leaving things the way they are, we can hit on gravity. By hitting on gravity, you're simply adding more and more subdivision points to this and you're sort of forcing gravity to happen. So these would now simply go down here, down and down there. And of course with this, you can choose to play with the amount of bevels that you want to have and you can also choose to play with the number of wire counts that you have. So we can increase the wire counts the way we want. If we like to have some random offsets, we can do that. If we like to play with the total radius, we can also do that. So with this, you can start getting some very interesting looking stuff. So let's also increase that wire. Let's play up with this a bit and we can get something like that. So if you want them to be simple arrays, of course you can get this. If you want them to be random stuff, you can get it as well. And once you're done with this, if there are certain cables that you would like to convert to stuff, you can. So we can select this cable, maybe this other cable. Let's say we have a couple of cables like this. We would probably want to convert all of these three cables or four of them to something else. We can now select them, press J on the keyboard, 
and then we can change them to anything that we want. So we can roll our middle mouse and get something happening for us. So at this point, if you simply tap Q on the keyboard and press 2, you can also change them to be something like that. Click and of course you notice we are now having some variation. We can select this other one and maybe select something like uh, this one as well. So let's also select this one as well. Hold down, you know, shift, select this other one. And we can also add a couple of variations to this. So we can go in, tap J on the keyboard and then tap Q on the keyboard and switch to two. And with that, we can also generate something like this. Maybe we can get some more, you know, definition with what we have here and we can have this. So this way you can see how easy it is for you to start creating some very interesting looking and complex cables. Now for anyone who would like to get this, you can simply go over to Blender Market where you can see a ton of things that you can work with. And you can also notice that you can scale individual handle points like we have right here. So all of these handle points, you can simply select them like this and we can go in and scale this. So we can grab that we can scale it. This is quite heavy right now. So we can grab it and of course we can scale it and we can do some stuff. So this is more like it. For those who like to look at it, maybe you want to see it, you want to play with it. Link is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.